Hello networking enthusiasts. In today's video, we'll learn the basics of Docker Swarm networking, including overlay networks, gateway bridges, and routing mesh. We'll talk about its benefits and see what issues it can solve. My name is Philip. Let's get started. In the last few videos, we've discussed how containers on the same Docker host can communicate with each other and also with the external world. Just to quickly recap, each container has its own networking namespace that provides network isolation. By default, every new Docker network is a bridge on the host. Container networking interfaces are plugged into the bridge using a virtual Ethernet pair. With this technology, containers connected to the same bridge can talk to each other freely. Such a single node Docker setup is ideal for development and testing as you don't need a complex multi-node installation that's expensive and difficult to manage. Additionally, on a single Docker host, you can easily prototype an application or a service. You just define your application's environment and dependencies in a Docker file build a container image and then run it on the same machine without the need for an extensive infrastructure setup. Moreover, you can run multiple applications with different dependencies on a single machine as Docker allows you to isolate those applications in containers. Basically, with a single node Docker setup, you have a lightweight and cost-effective virtualization environment. Docker containers have much less overhead than traditional VMs. Single node Docker installation is ideal for home or small scale deployment. However, larger production scale deployments require high availability and scalability. Of course, one could deploy multiple single node Docker hosts running containers and put a load balancer in front. This could work, however, managing such setup on a scale would quickly become a nightmare. Containers on different Docker hosts would not be able to talk to each other directly. You would have to expose one container to the external world so that another container running on a different host can access it. But what if a node goes down? All containers and services running on that node will also be down. To address that, you would have to replicate services on multiple nodes and rely on external balancers to access it. DB balancer would point to DB containers. Web containers would reach DB only via that external balancer. Yet another balancer would distribute web traffic to web containers. Things would get complex real quick. What if I tell you that Docker has a built-in solution for all of those issues? Let's start from the beginning. Imagine we have three servers, node 1, node 2, and node 3. Docker is installed on every server. In my example, nodes are interconnected with two networks. 172.27.96-20, that we call the management network, and 192.168.10-24, that we call the production or data network. We can build Docker Swarm that's native clustering and orchestration solution for Docker containers. Swarm will enable us to deploy, manage, and scale containerized applications across multiple machines in a highly available and fault-tolerant manner. It's not necessary to have two separate networks to run Docker Swarm, but in a production setup, it's recommended to separate cluster management traffic from data traffic between the containers. Let me initiate the cluster by logging into node 1 and issuing docker swarm init command. Advertise address is the management IP. Data path address is the data IP. Swarm has been initialized and our node is the manager. Basically, there are two types of nodes in a docker swarm. Manager nodes that are responsible for controlling the swarm and managing the orchestration of services, and worker nodes that are responsible for running containers as a part of the services deployed in the swarm. By default, the swarm manager is also a swarm worker. 
we can add other nodes as managers for high availability. In order to do that, I will ask for the manager token with docker swarm join token manager command. It will provide the necessary command that needs to be run on other nodes. Let's go to node 2 and run that join command. Let's also repeat the same step on node 3. Now, let me go back to node 1 and list our swarm nodes. We see three nodes in operation. If we list our Docker networks, there will be two new networks, Docker Gateway Bridge of Bridge Type and Ingress of Overlay Type. We'll be discussing them in more detail later in the video. In the meantime, let's create a new network. We'll set the type as an overlay. It means the network will span across all Swarm nodes. How it works is an Ethernet frame will be encapsulated into a VXLAN envelope that has a virtual network identifier called VNI. As you want to have multiple overlay networks, packets from the same virtual network will have the same VNI. The VXLAN frame now containing the original Ethernet frame and VXLAN header is then further encapsulated within an UDP packet. The use of UDP allows VXLAN traffic to traverse the standard IP networks, including the public internet. The UDP packet is then routed over the layer 3 network. When the VXLAN frame arrives at its destination, the VXLAN header is stripped off and the original Ethernet frame is revealed. Here's the video where I demonstrate that in more detail. The attachable parameters allows us to manually attach individual containers to our newly created network. By default, only services can use an overlay network. Finally, we'll name the network OviNet1. Let's check if the network has been created. Yes, it's there. I'll also check the IP address range the network is using. It's 10.0.1 24. I will spawn a new Alpine container, name it Alpine1 and attach it to our newly created OviNet1 network. This is a regular container. We are not using any special Swarm functionality apart from the attachable overlay network. Let's go to node 2 and spawn an Alpine2 container in the same network. Now let me show you some magic. I will go back to node 1 where our Alpine 1 container is running and try pinging Alpine 2. It works. I'm able to ping a container that resides on a different Docker host. If we dump the UDP traffic on our data path interface, we'll discover ICMP traffic between Alpine 1, that's 10.0.1.2, and Alpine 2. That's 10.0.1.4. That ICMP traffic is encapsulated into UDP with VXLAN network identifier 4097. Let me create yet another overlay network, OviNet2. Now I will spawn yet another Alpine container, Alpine3, and connect it to the OviNet2 network. Then spawn the Alpine 4 container on node 2. Next, let's go back to node 1 and try pinging the Alpine 4 container. If we dump the UDP traffic on the data path interface, we'll see the traffic between Alpine 1 and Alpine 2 using 4097 virtual network ID and traffic between Alpine 3 and Alpine 4 using 4098 virtual network ID. Here's how it looks. We have three Docker hosts in a swarm interconnected with 192.168.10 network that's called our data path network. We have two overlay networks, OviNet1 and OviNet2, that write on top of our data path network. Each overlay network has its own identifier. Traffic from Alpine1 to Alpine2 is encapsulated into VXLAN with VNI 4097 and into UDP. Then the packet goes over the data network 
to node 2, where it's decapsulated and delivered to the Alpine container. The same story is for traffic from Alpine 3 to Alpine 4. Because Alpine 3 is part of a different virtual network, it will be encapsulated into VXLAN with a different VNI that's 4098. Then it will go via the data path network inside an UDP packet and arrive at node 2, where it will be decapsulated and delivered to Alpine 4. Packets encapsulated into UDP will write the same data path network. Long story short, you can have millions of virtual networks on top of a single data path network. You can check the VXLAN identifier of an overlay network by inspecting the network with Docker Network Inspect. Just to sum up, one of the Docker Swarm benefits is multi-node networking, which enables containers running on different nodes to communicate seamlessly. Moreover, service discovery works across nodes. You don't have to know the IP address of the remote container, nor don't have to know on which node the remote container is located. Docker Swarm will handle that for you. We know that containers running on different nodes can communicate with each other via an overlay network that uses VXLAN technology. What if a container wants to access other services outside of Docker Swarm or wants to access the internet? Here's where the Docker Gateway Bridge Network comes into play. When a node joins the Swarm, a special Gateway Bridge Network is created. By default, it will have a 172.18-16 IP network range, as opposed to the regular bridge network that has 172.17-16 IP network range. Let's list the containers on node 1. Alpine 1 is part of Ovinet 1 overlay network, and Alpine 3 is part of Ovinet 2 overlay network. Let's attach to Alpine 1 and attach to Alpine 3. Containers have two network interfaces. ETH0 is plugged into the overlay network to reach containers on other Docker hosts. ETH1, however, is plugged into the Docker gateway bridge. If we check how to get to Google DNS with IP route get, it will tell us to go via ETH1 interface that's plugged into Docker Gateway Bridge. If we ask how to get to Alpine 2 container that's on another node, it will tell us to go via the ETH0 interface that's our overlay network. Let's look at the diagram once more. For it to reflect the actual state, let's add Docker Gateway Bridge on every host and also add a secondary network interface on every container. Traffic between containers will flow via the overlay network and traffic from the container to the outside world will go via the Gateway Bridge. There is one more thing to mention. We have two containers on the same Docker host attached to two different overlay networks. Alpine 1 is attached to Ovinet 1 and Alpine 3 is attached to Ovinet 2. Please mind that both containers are attached to the same bridge via ETH1 interface. I will try pinging Alpine 2 from Alpine 1 via the Docker gateway bridge. It's not possible. This bridge is for communication with external networks and not for communication between containers. If that connection would be possible, it would be a huge security gap. Finally, let's discuss one of the more interesting things that Docker Swarm has to offer, that's the routing mesh. First, let me demonstrate what it can do and later I will show you how it actually works under the hood. Let's start from scratch. In Docker Swarm, if you want the outside world to access your containerized application, you don't create a standalone container and expose its port. Instead, you create a service, it will give you certain benefits. 
I will go to node 3 and create an overlay network. Let's call it OVNet. Then I will create a service with Docker service create. I will name the service Nginx, then expose the service on port 8080 to the outside world. My application will be listening on port 80 inside the container. I will specify the number of containers to deploy. I want only a single container, so I will put one. I want the service to be attached to the OVNet overlay network that we've just created. Finally, I will specify Nginx as the image to use. Let's check if the service has been created with Docker service list. It will tell us basic information like service name, number of replicas, that is the number of running containers, image used and exposed ports. Mind, it does not tell us on which Docker node the container is running. To get this information, we'll use the docker service ps command followed by the service name. Container is running on node 1. Mind that the container supporting the service does not have to be deployed on the same node as we executed the command from. In other words, I've created a service on node 3, but the cluster decided to spin up the container on node 1. That's perfectly normal. I just told the Docker Swarm cluster that I want a service with a single Nginx container. I don't care which node the container will be placed in. Moreover, Swarm will make sure that the specified number of containers is always up. Let me stop node 1 virtual machine. Cluster did detect that node 1 is down and spin the Nginx container on node 2. Fantastic. Docker Swarm Container Orchestration makes it easy to deploy containers across a cluster of machines. It handles the scheduling and placement of containers on available resources. Moreover, it has auto-healing capabilities as it can automatically replace failed containers to maintain the desired level of service availability. Let me put node 1 back in operation. Our service is still running on node 2. Let's go to a client machine that's outside of the cluster and let's try calling the Nginx service on node 2. As expected, it works. I was able to get to node 2 that directed the traffic to Nginx container. Now, something that will blow your mind away. Let me call node 1. Works. Let me call node 3. Works. No matter which cluster node I call, I get a reply. How is that possible? The container is only deployed on node 2. How can node 1 and node 3 serve the traffic? That's because of the routing mesh. As you suspect, all Docker nodes are interconnected with an overlay network. Any node can receive traffic and then use the overlay network to get to a container on a different host. Let me show you one more thing. I will go to node 1 and increase the number of Nginx replicas to 3. This command tells Docker Swarm that we want three Nginx containers. If we list available services, we see the number of container has increased. I will run Docker Service PS to get more details. There are three containers spread evenly between three nodes. Now, if I run a log capture on all three nodes and then call the service few times via node 1, we can see traffic on all three containers load balance from node 1 to other containers. So our routing mesh not only listens for requests on all nodes, but also can balance the traffic. Before we get into the technical details on how it's possible, let me draw a simplified diagram of a routing mesh. We have three Docker hosts that build a swarm cluster. We define a service with three Nginx containers, one on each host. Service is exposed to the outside world on port 8080 on every node. Each node has a swarm load balancer that balances the traffic to other containers in round robin fashion. If traffic arrives on node 1, the first request will go to container 1. 
Second request will go to container 2. Third request will go to container 3 and uh, so on. If traffic arrives to node 2, the first request will go to container 2, second request will go to container 3, and third request will go to container 1. Thanks to the routing mesh, your service is highly available due to built-in load balancing. You can call any node and your request will be routed via the overlay network to the appropriate container. Service mesh will also ensure proper communication even if the containers are dynamically created or destroyed. Let's see how it works in practice. At the bottom, we'll go into the Nginx container networking namespace to see its interfaces. To do that, I will list networking namespaces with lsns command. Then I will enter the networking namespace of target PID uh, 1675, which is our Nginx process running inside the container. Finally, let's list networking interfaces of the Nginx container. There are three networking interfaces. ETH0 is the ingress overlay network. ETH2 is the Docker gateway bridge network. ETH1 is the OV net overlay network. We know that our container is attached to three networks, ingress, Docker gateway bridge, and OV net. Let's analyze the incoming traffic flow. First step after the traffic arrives to our Docker host is network address translation of the destination IP. To see that, let's check the pre-routing chain of NAT table on the Docker host. It directs the traffic to Docker ingress chain. Let's see that chain. Traffic arriving on TCP port 8080 gets nutted to port 8080 on 172.18.02. That's the balancer. Let's look at how the load balancing layer is set up. I will list interfaces of our Docker host. Load balancer is part of the Docker gateway network. Let's see what containers are attached to that network. First container is our Nginx, and the second one, called Ingress Sbox, is the balancer. In fact, Ingress Sbox is not a container but a networking namespace with some smart firewall rules. Let's go into the Ingress Sbox namespace and list the interfaces. Yes, we are in the right place. One of the interfaces IP is 172.70.02. That's the address the host is directing the traffic to. Let's check what happens next. When the traffic arrives to the ingress sbox namespace, it's marked on the firewall. To see that, I will list the pre-routing chain of the mangle table. What it does is mark a packet with a 100 hex mark. Let's convert that to decimal. The mark is 256. Load balancing is done by EPVS, which stands for IP Virtual Server. It is a component of the Linux kernel that provides load balancing and high availability for networking services. We can check its configuration with the EPVS ADM command. The configuration is as follows. Connections marked with firewall mark 256 should be balanced in round robin fashion to 10.6, 10.7, and 10.8 addresses. Those are part of the ingress overlay network that's created by default in every Docker Swarm installation. Last thing to mention is that the source address is nutted to the address of ETH0 interface so that the traffic from other containers know how to get back. Let me draw that. Let's remove the load balancers and put some real components. I will attach the hosts to the external network with ETH0 interface. Those are part of 192.168.10/24 network. Next, I will add the Docker gateway bridge on every node. That will be 172.18.01/16 network. 
I will also add ingress overlay network that's 10.0.0 slash 24. Docker Gateway Bridge and Ingress Overlay Networks are created by default. Let's add the Ingress Sbox namespace with ETH1 connected to Docker Gateway Bridge with 172.18.02 and ETH0 connected to Ingress Overlay Network with 10.0.0.2. Now let's add our firewall rule that will perform destination NAT. It will Direct the traffic arriving via external interface ETH0 on port 8080 TCP to the ingress SBOX namespace uh, over Docker Gateway Bridge Network. Here the traffic is marked on the firewall and hits an EPVS balancer that directs the traffic to containers using the ingress overlay network. Let's add firewall source NAT rule so that traffic knows how to get back. Finally, let's see how the traffic flows. Traffic arrives on ETH0 interface on the host, then is nutted to ETH1 inside Ingress SBOX namespace via the Docker Gateway Bridge network. Here the traffic is marked on the firewall. Next, EPVS is balancing the traffic that was marked on the firewall in round robin fashion to other containers using ingress overlay network. A very clever solution. Load balancing across multiple replicas of a service, DNS-based service discovery, high availability by automatically redirecting traffic to healthy containers in case of container failures or node outages, scalability. The routing mesh allows you to scale services horizontally by adding or removing service replicas, New containers are automatically added to the mesh and can start receiving traffic without additional configuration. Uh, running multiple services on the same SORM cluster while keeping them isolated and ensuring that they don't interfere with each other. Abstraction of the underlying network complexity and a user-friendly way to set up and manage container networks. In summary, the Docker Swarm routing mesh offers a range of benefits that make it easier to deploy and manage containerized applications.